Coming up tonight in the Ringside Report. Stuff. <laughs> A lot of stuff. So, WWE announcer Greg Hamilton has been fired for threatening legal action against a rapper. Uh, Jim Ross has sadly revealed his skin cancer diagnosis. Impact have tried to book three ex-WWE stars for Bound for Glory, but failed. We had Charlotte suffering some backstage heat following the events happening at SmackDown. Ashanti Adonis has not been cleared to wrestle despite his re- main roster debut. We have uh, Kylie Ray sadly taking a break from wrestling. AEW and Impact's deal potentially ending soon. We have the exciting news of Carmella and Corey Graves getting engaged. Mansoor has fired back at Ryback's comments on Twitter. And we have Eric Bischoff thinking that CM Punk has shit the bed for AEW. Mm. And when's that coming up, Anthony? It's going up right fucking now, Cal. <laughs> oh. So, let's talk about the first one. Now, this has been in my notes so long, Carl, that you weren't even fired when I made this, when I first noted this, right? <laughs> so, Greg going. Hamilton. Greg Hamilton. For those who don't know who Greg Hamilton is, where have you been? Um, he's a ring announcer. Is he a ring announcer? He's an announcer of some sort for WWE. I don't <laughs> even know. He doesn't know either. Some guy. Yeah. He works for WWE, and he's got a mouth on him, as it turns out. So, basically, he had a bit of a Twitter exchange, if you will, with... A, a rapper whose name is covered up by a stupid fucking advert. Um, sorry, <laughs> professional this. <laughs> talk amongst <laughs> yourselves, talk amongst yourselves. Anyway, so he had a bit of a Twitter spat. Um, essentially, this rapper had sampled his voice in the song uh, that they'd done. And he went on to, I believe it was Instagram, to have a bit of a rant saying um, basically that, you know, they've used it without his consent and he's going to be speaking to W. I'm paraphrasing, by the way. going to be speaking to WWE's lawyers and you'll be paying me for years and um, uh, et cetera like that. And don't use my voice again. Pretty much he ended it and went on a bit of a rant. Now, one of the specific things and one of the key elements of this was that he mentioned that the WWE lawyers are going to be the ones who will deal with this fella. Now, this rapper in particular, who, again, I still can't see his name. West Side Gun. West Side Gun. Thank you, Carl, because I am hip with the rap scene, so I knew that was. Because um, so, you're, you're from the East Side. East side gun. So, so West Side Gun has had, he's been a wrestling fan for years and has had a fairly good relationship with WWE up to this point. And I'm not saying that's why what has further transpired has transpired, but Greg Hamilton has been in for a bit of a shock and has been actually released by WWE following this bit of a spat. Um, so, you know, maybe he should have approached it more calmly <laughs> or not said anything at all who knows but uh yeah, yeah that's an interesting one Carl, that's think? a hell that's a hell of a failed flex that isn't it it's like oh it's well just, you've yeah. sampled me i'm gonna you know get my bosses to sue you and they're like are you fucking monk you fired it's like, <laughs> also, who are you yeah <laughs> like, like shit that's, that's, i'm not being funny greg it's not like they were sampling roman reigns voice what ways are you throwing around well clearly none um <laughs> Yeah. You know, I'm sorry I mean, you lost your job and all, but... Obviously, I don't know what the specifics are. You know, if somebody featured, you know, some audio from us on this show on a um, rap record, I'd probably just think, that's pretty cool. But if I, I wanted I would to assume... I share the fuck out of it and be made up with ourselves. If I wanted to assume, at the same time, I'd like to think I could, because I'm giving my, you know, uh, my we permission get to WWE use WWE lawyers that. onto that. Um, so, okay. yeah, as long as we're not threatening WWE's lawyers. Um, yeah. I you think know, that's to... probably the bit that's got him in trouble. You threaten yeah. all you want. Don't use our lawyers. <laughs> Don't like, bring us into this pitch. I think yeah. I reckon that's been the crux of it. How dare you try and use our lawyers? Um, yeah. But yeah, you know, it's sad. I don't want to see anyone lose their job, but it was such a weird exchange and a massive overreaction, to be honest, from Greg. And uh, sadly, he's sort of suffered a consequence from that. You know, WWE haven't talked too kindly to it at all. Yeah. No, a uh, bit of a shame. Uh, very, yeah, it's a very um, sad outcome, isn't it? I suppose in the day to, to ultimately end up in him being fired off the back of it. But yeah, I guess it, at least it means the problem goes away for WWE. So yeah, yep. um, <laughs> uh, problem solving by WWE. Good guy, Greg has been fired. Um, oh my, so, <laughs> I like Greg's. 
Except for the vegan sausage roll. This is wrong. Um, that was a crazy idea. She never have done it. Never. Sorry. Never. Slight digress. Um, Anyway, uh, next one to talk about, a uh, little bit of a sad one, unfortunately. So, as you know, some have said, one of the potentially greatest announcers of all time, good old Jim Ross, um, he posted on his Twitter on the 23rd of October that um, he was on his way to Orlando for Dynamite um, and basically uh, has confirmed a skin di- uh, skin cancer diagnosis. So, um, on the 21st of October, he posted on his Twitter that he's been dealing with... Um, a bit of an issue for over a year now. Uh, that was a potential skin can ish- uh, skin cancer issue. Um, so he was planned to have a CAT scan um, and was hoping for good results. But unfortunately, um, the outcome proved that he does in fact have skin cancer. Um, so he's now waiting on a radiologist study to determine the best treatments. Uh, you know, going forward, uh, which is likely set to be radiation. But you know, he's stated that he's feeling great. He's ready to attack it, and has thanked everybody for. This you know support um, during this time so yeah just a it's a what a massive shame horrible piece of news to find out shit. but and like I just want to say though you know like I, I so admire uh, Jim Ross's like approach and mentality to this like um like that like because it is it's a shit diagnosis there's no two ways about it but um his whole mentality around it like I was I was in order of him really in that like he's just ready to fight it he's not gonna let it beat him that's uh no fair play to the man, you know. Yeah, I mean, you can say anything you want about Jim Ross. You you might love him, you might hate him, whatever. But that guy's been through some stuff, man. To have all the the bells palsy stuff that he's been through, and obviously he's, he's you know lost many friends in the business, many close friends. Um, you know, he lost it's his been wife. Been done over by a company um, that he loved as well. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah WWE screwed him over. He lost his wife recently as well. So, and now you know to to end up with skin cancer as well to boot. You know, there's. Um, yeah, you know, it's such a nice guy to have a lot of awful stuff happen to him. But, you know, yeah. his his positivity is a great message. And hopefully, you know, he comes out the other side, whether it's radiation, whatever the treatment is, hopefully it works. And, you know, he can carry on being good old JR. So, so you know. Kick its ass, Jim. Yeah, man. It's a, it's a bit of a slobber knocker, but we're sure that, you know, <laughs> you'll uh, you will definitely kick its ass. So Definitely. Beat it like a government mule, as they will say. Loving all the uh, the JR nods there, love it. Yeah. Um, so moving on to one that's, um, to be honest, a little bit more frivolous, but I suppose we need that after such a um, such a article. Uh, and this is just referring back to Bountiful Glory, and it's more of an interesting point, Carl. That obviously we didn't see any of these um, things come to fruition, but it's since come out, and I think a lot of people were well aware that um, the the uh, Adam Shear or the former Braun Strowman had been approached. Uh, and people were really expecting him to turn up because apparently he'd been, some, like, he'd been noted in a hotel with um, Scott Diamore, um and it, it seemed like they were having fairly long conversations. It seemed like the negotiations were happening. Everyone was expecting to show up for Banfield Gordy, and we did not get that. Uh, but apparently they have been they were heavily approaching before Banfield Glory three X W E superstars, one being one of them, the other being Bray Wyatt, and the last one being Bronson Reed. And um, as we now know, none of them actually showed up for Bound for Glory, so we're not sure at what point the communication broke down. And I suppose, really, it's it's worth mentioning, uh, not just so we can go, what happened there? It's worth because they are clear, and they've made it very clear that they are in talks with these three. And um, therefore, we didn't see them at Bound for Glory, but can we expect to see all or some of these, these three XWB superstars turning up on Impact anytime soon? What do you think, mm, Definitely an interesting one. Um, I think in terms of Bray, he hasn't really shown um, from, you know, other people I've in the industry. cards close to his chest there, really. Yeah, uh, you know, there's been no kind of talk around him, you know, definitely being keen or open to it or whatever. Obviously, we reported last week that Braun had had some talks with uh, Scott DeMore, Um But, yeah, it looks like they haven't come to uh, fruition in time for Banff Glory. But also, interestingly, uh, Braun... Oh, Adam Shear, sorry, uh, who's now going to be known as the Titan, um, posted on his Twitter recently that he's got a independent date booked for December, and he said that's going to be his only show in 2021. So it doesn't look like he's going to rock right. up on Impact anytime soon either. So well, could that be a lie? Could be, could be um, throwing people off the scent potentially, but um, 
yeah, interesting one. Obviously, it's a shame. You know, we mentioned Bound for Glory was a fantastic pay per view, one of the best one that Impact have put on in a while. So maybe some of these big surprises uh, that didn't come off could have been the you know tip of the iceberg for them in that case. But who knows? It's obviously um, refreshing to see them having talks with high caliber um, superstars. Maybe we will get to see some of them on the Impact roster um, sometime soon. Indeed, indeed. Um, so the next one to talk about is some of the fallout from the controversy of Charlotte Flair um, and Becky's title exchange on SmackDown this past week. Um, so apparently word on the grapevine is that Charlotte has reportedly isolated herself from the WWE locker room. Um, her friends don't even recognize her anymore. Um, and uh, I mean, that's bad. <laughs> no, I won't go for that joke. It's too obvious. Yeah, but yeah don't do that. Um, don't do that. Um, but no, you know, this is coming from Wade Keller, who's obviously on PW Torch. He's basically reached out to his contacts, and, you know, this is the information he has kind of passed on. He's saying that, um, you know, basically, he's also tried to reach out as well to make sure that it's not just one sided. Um, you know, that is the people who are saying this is, is, is quite neutral, but. Basically, uh, paraphrasing um, who he was paraphrasing, um, he said, I'm here to lighten up the you know, language a little bit, but effectively, uh, the wrestler that was not thrilled with Charlotte just said, the way she's been acting is going to cause issues both with colleagues and with management. Um, he really stressed how respected and well like Becky is universally in the locker room, um, and that she was seen as a bit of a hero for the way that she kind of challenged and reacted to Charlotte, uh, Charlotte's antics, but... Um, Charlotte has a reputation flat out for being difficult and constantly concerned that she's not getting the respect of someone of her stature and accomplishments or at least her character uh, character stature and uh, character's accomplishments deserves maybe this blending of the two right now that some people um, you know got some people wondering about her so she feels she be, should be treated at a different level that the other stars who are on top had to work really hard to protect themselves Um so, yeah, um, it's not looking great, basically. <laughs> it's the... I think, though, the truth is somewhere in between. Like, mm. I get that Becky is well-respected and well-liked backstage, and uh, there's no slight against her. She's playing a character when she's playing the heel Becky, which doesn't even come off because she's actually quite a friendly person. Mm. Um, but when you know or when you hear things like the fact that Charlotte genuinely wanted to, to give Bianca the push and drop the belt clean to her, you just I can understand the frustration with the booking. Now, yeah. was it the right thing to do with the whole belt fiasco? Maybe not, but I don't know. Like, part of me feels like, well, she's not all about Charlotte, is she? She's willing to pull off something like that because that would have been a better booking. That would have been a better shout. Uh, and it wasn't about putting Charlotte over. It was about putting uh, Bianca Belair over. So no. I just don't I don't know. I feel like it might not necessarily be all one-sided, like Charlotte's a complete arse in this scenario, do you know what I mean? Um, yeah. But obviously, that being said, it doesn't matter what the truth of it is sometimes. Um, the popularity within the business can be a massive deciding factor. So I think along some of this, Carl, am I right in saying that um, there was rumours that she had some heat with Vince because she sort of didn't, she, she refused to speak to him after the segment or something like along that line? I mean, there's a lot of conflicting reports on this. So, I mean, firstly, the segment itself, I didn't even really notice it too much. I, you know, I said to you, I just thought it was WWE's like, standard shite booking. It, it um, felt like booking, to be fair. It just felt like it was just... the fact. A bit of a mess. Like <laughs> yeah. um, but, you know, apparently, by all accounts, what was meant to happen was Becky was meant to get hold of both titles and hold both titles up and be like Becky Two Belts or whatever. Um, and ultimately, that just didn't happen. And then when Charlotte dropped the title, um, that also wasn't meant to happen. But then that was Becky saying that that was her doing it on purpose and being disrespectful. Um, you know, Sonya Deville was kind of brought into this as well. She was obviously overseeing the segment. Um, you know, there was also a report... Uh, that said that apparently Sonya was furious and was wanting to fight Charlotte backstage um, as well. So obviously it it sounds like there's a a lot of a lot of heat on Charlotte. Um, it, you know, also it would appear from a lot of the people backstage. But yeah, you know, to your point, apparently, um, which is where the conflicting reports kind of come into place is Vince was apparently furious that Charlotte didn't stick around to speak to Vince after all this happened because apparently the the argument that took place between Becky and Charlotte took place right in Gorilla as soon as they got back, um, you know, through the curtain. So right in front of Vince. Um, I'm not too sure when the, the Sonya Deville kind of thing happened. Um, but 
the other side of the you know report is Charlotte was escorted out of the building so that the confrontation wouldn't conf- uh, continue because Becky had a dark match after SmackDown went off the air uh, to kind of close out the show. <laughs> um, so I think people effectively were like, let's get Charlotte out of here to defuse that situation. But, you know, oh, if, if Vince is kind of like, well, I'm upset because she didn't stick around to talk to me, but she was getting escorted out the building, what yeah, she meant to I do. Have to stick around. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I don't really know the whole ins and outs of it. Obviously, we're kind of piecing together information from various sources. But, yeah, I don't know. It's, um, it's not looking good, is there's a, you know, between Charlotte. Obviously, Andrade... He also, um, you know, was very didn't mince his words. That he basically said, told him to be to fuck themselves on his his Twitter um, mm. the other week. And I mean, he's not he's not really known as a talker. So, uh, well, I get why he didn't mince his words, but yeah, um, you know, people are kind of drawing comparison between Page and Del Rio and stuff. And I d- is it getting blown a bit too out of proportion? I, you know, I don't know. At the end of the day, Charlotte is a legend. You know, she comes from the Flair dynasty. Um, you know, she's a 13-time champion, so there's probably also a bit of nervousness from WWE's part of if they did lose her, you know, someone like that rocking up in AW is a, is a huge coup for them from for their women's division. Yeah. So um, It's funny, you know, because like it is, and I can't deny it, I'm not going to deny anything about Charlotte and her, her status. Um, I don't want that. I want her to stay in. She's a <laughs> WWE person. For me. She's one of those people who is a WWE person. And this is just like a personal feeling, but it'd be like John Cena turning up in AEW for me. Mm. It just wouldn't feel right. Um, she's a WWE person through and through, as far as I'm concerned. And because of that, I honestly think that this may be some sort of frustration because she loves what she does, but I honestly can't see them not working this out. Do you know what I mean? Like I've seen so many graphics of like, oh, Charlotte is all elite. Um, but it's just, I don't know. I, I can't see her leaving WWE. And it just wouldn't sit just wouldn't sit right with me uh, leaving WWE to be honest. Not no, me neither. Um, I mean, to be fair, would I be down for Charlotte versus Jay Cargill as a mirror match? Fucking damn right. You would, you would. Um, but yeah, I can't. Um, I can't personally see it myself either. So yeah, I imagine it's all just um, yeah. But I don't know though because if you think about it, I think she's got a couple of years left on her contract. So. I think it is a case of her trying to bury the hatchet with the people that she's got to work with. You know, there was rumours saying that nobody backstage wants to even work with her at this point. So, you know, that obviously isn't good for business. So, you know, we had the we had the thing with Nia Jax, didn't we? Actually, take place in the ring live yeah, the other week. Unanimously blame, we unanimously blame Nia for that one. Oh so. yeah, well, a hundred percent. You know, I, I still will to this day, regardless of anything that gets reported. But um, so yeah. You know, if there's not that many people out there who are clamouring to work with her, then what do you do? Mm. It's interesting, isn't it? Mm. It's interesting. I mean, they've got a sizable enough roster that it's some of the bigger talents who can throw the weight around might say that, but she'll always have people to wrestle against. Reality, yeah. really. Yeah, no, definitely they will. Yeah. Crazy. So, um, next one, Carl, if we're, if we're happy to move on. Mm-hmm. Is um, it's only a quick one, but I just thought it's uh, it's an interesting mention, especially because we mentioned them before in this week in wrestling. If you haven't heard it, it's probably up here on a card. Um, anyway, it's Ashanti the Adonis, a uh, member of Hit Row, went up to the main roster. But by all accounts, uh, the rumor has it that he hasn't actually been cleared to wrestle on the main roster. So whilst we might see him as a member of the faction, then we might see him. You know, in certain segments, we are not going to see him wrestle anytime soon. Now, some of the belief is um, obviously the the big on Isaiah Scott, I believe, as a solo talent, but um, they might be sort of puts um, Shanti Adonis in the tag scene when he is cleared to wrestle. So they have definitely got designs on him for what do you want him to do on the main roster. By all accounts, he is um, certainly for the forcible. Um, they they're not even clear of what it is. They just said he has a medical condition, but um, they don't really know how much it'll be before he's going to be able to wrestle. Um, I think they've speculated it shouldn't be too much longer, but they're not being very clear about what the issue is either. So, um, just an interesting tidbit, you will, that despite being called up, he actually can't do anything at the moment. Mm, that is interesting. Bad timing for him. <laughs> Finally, get his main roster break, and he can't do anything. Um, but yeah, so let's see how that unfolds. Um, the next mm-hmm. one's a bit of an unfortunate one as well. So, um, Kylie Ray um, has said that she is taking a break from pro wrestling. I think it's also she's being quoted or something at some point saying that she's now no longer a pro wrestler. Um, but basically, she released a statement um, saying that 
Due to unforeseen circumstances, she will not be able to perform at Freelance Underground and NWA this weekend, nor AAW next weekend. She said she's found herself in a relapse situation and she needs to take some time for recovery. It's been going on since late August and has gradually regressed since then. Um, she's tried holding this in, working through the pain, doing her best to fulfil commitments, but it's become too much and she needs some help. Um, she's been having a difficult time differentiating what is real and what is fake, especially in these types of environments. Um, so regretfully, uh, regretfully, she's tried masking the pain through marijuana and alcohol. So, you know, she's tried to be as open as she can with everybody about her mental health struggles, but she wasn't being honest with in terms of how she was coping, um, you know, with her unhealthy coping mechanisms that she's uh, adopted. So for that, she's deeply sorry. Um, so, yeah. Um, I mean, it's it's shit news. There's no two ways about that. Um, again, like, I'll just do it. Like, she's apologising there, the, the way she's tried to sort of deal with it on her own terms and so on like that. But at the end of the day, regardless of how long it took, she's got to a point now she's doing the healthiest thing for herself and she's being honest about that. You've got to admire that approach. I mean, we saw, I think it was last year during the pandemic, we had a similar thing. She debuted with AEW and then left AEW and then, there was a lot of speculation that she wasn't going to wrestle again. I think she retired once before. Yeah. Um, and we have seen her back and obviously made up to see her back. But if uh, mental health comes first at the end of the day, doesn't it? So, you know, if this yeah. is what she's got to do, it's what she's got to do. She doesn't need to apologise to anyone, really. No. And I think, you know, if you've seen anything from, you know, especially even recent times with the likes of Daphne and so on and so forth, is, you know, people need to support her and not turn on her. You know, I've already seen a lot of, um, vitriol on Twitter and, and, and the like of people basically saying oh just stop stop offering her contracts and stop giving her work she clearly can't do it I'm all, that, for, it's... Like, I'm all for like that kind well, not that kind of like I don't mind when people get impassioned about a character do you know what I mean mm. like when people hate it's probably not the right example because um, she's not very good at being a heel not through any sort of massive way um, other than the fact that she's sort of too liked I suppose but like when Becky is being a heel Becky and people are like, oh, I hate Becky. You go, I can live with that. You know, I can go, well, that, you're getting into the character, you're getting immersed into the story. That's like disliking a villain in a film. Do you know what I mean? But yeah. when she's coming out with something real like this and she's telling you why she's taking a break from wrestling, and this, is, this isn't Kelly Ray the wrestler, this is the genuine person saying, this is what I need to do. That's when you need to start with that bullshit. Yeah. You know, that's not a time to be a toxic asshole. That's just, that, that's a genuine person who's having a genuine problem. Fucking leave it be. Yeah. This isn't a character thing. I think, unfortunately, a lot of people can't differentiate that fact of, of what's real and, you know, if, for a person that they're going through in their personal life versus a, a character that they, you know, portray on television. But, um, you know, the fact is, yeah, she's had struggles in the past. She's retired before. She's come back. Um, that doesn't mean that people should be kind of saying to her, oh, well, good riddance and, you know, no need to come back then or stop stop offering her work. She can't commit and blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, if you're upset that she's had to miss them you know, appearances and you, you paid money to go and see her, absolutely, you can be upset and, you know, things like that. But that doesn't mean that you should be waging a kind of personal attack on her or the reasons why she's had to withdraw from the event. So I just hope whatever, you know, she's going through and, and stuff at the moment, I, I'd like to hope that people have learned from past mistakes and people will actually offer a support system for her to get better and yeah. come back stronger once again because you know she's smiley cat at the end of the day she's she's good yeah. um, at what she does obviously seen her quite a bit in nwa um as well and obviously she's got a real talent for the business so i hope she gets herself sorted out um uh, gets herself back you know and happy and if that's away from pro wrestling so be it um if it's back in pro wrestling i hope that the pro wrestling fans just show some support and, and some respect and you know to your point the way she's handling it she's not shying away from anything she's exactly you know she's being very upfront with what she's you know and and almost like remorseful for the way she's been trying to deal with things and stuff so yep. you know she's taking accountability and that's all you can do at the end of the day so yeah yeah hopefully she um yeah she she gets better and we get to see her again soon indeed so carl the next one and this is a largely speculative piece because there's been nothing official really said i think a lot of this rumor mill started on the back of the results of bound for glory and the back of christian um, now losing the uh, impact championship uh so it's been officially no specifics given um but in terms of this sort of 
crossover arrangements that they've had with uh, Impact AEW, the rumour would have it, the suggestion is that um, this deal is coming to an end sometime soon. Um, now, for the most, we've seen that separation happening over time. Like, Christian was almost one of the last parts of it. Mm-hmm. I can really the regular sort of connection is uh, the good brothers and technically Don Callis. Um, now, I'd, maybe that's going to come to an end when Kenny Omega gets his ass kicked by uh, <laughs> Hangman Adam Page, <laughs> which is definitely going to happen. Um, so maybe that's going to be the sort of ultimate sort of end to that relationship, and we're going to go back to separate shows. But I don't know. This for me, it's an interesting one because the, this is where it's, it's all being suggested and rumored that you know it's done, you know, um, but. Is it ever truly done? AEW have always been so open to their stars working on other shows that can you really say that? Like it yeah. doesn't seem to be a thing. Like I don't think the doors ever truly closed. The, the relationship might not be as as um, regular as it once was. But are we really mm. going to stop Don Callis from coming out with um, Kenny Omega? I don't. I can't see it myself. Yeah, it seems it seems like such a bizarre, you know, thing at this point because they're so ingrained um, in a lot of ways together. So it would feel like a very odd abrupt ending you know unless it unless we are talking after um full gear where maybe that is going to be the end of um you know the good brothers and don Callis's involvement and stuff but um yeah i'd be surprised especially well, with I mean, the likes of the, the you know the inspiration during an impact and stuff i think it'd be great to get them on aw tv and i still think there's a lot of you know aw have done a lot of work with new japan and, and, and stuff as well so yeah. there's definitely they're open to but it there's been nothing well the new japan relationship seems stronger at the moment but there's nothing been officially said from any party and i believe there was actually a suggestion that um we were going to see diana going up against brit and i think mm. a lot of people are expecting that not to happen now because diana has dropped the title but that's not to say that matchup still can't happen so again i don't know if this is necessarily the relationship done or whether there's ever really been any sort of you know contractual or you know time limit to this like the doors are open and they've always made that very clear that the the you know they've, they've been working with nwa impact new japan basically whatever the fuck they like a ton of the indies have shown up there i i i love the approach they've had to that where it's like you can work other stuff like you are our star but you can work other stuff it does nothing but good for them AEW's champions or AEW stars showing up in other places just promotes AEW, doesn't it and vice versa yeah. we get to know some impact people admittedly not so much the good brothers, but we get to know some impact people <laughs> and go, well, maybe I'll watch impact. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't know. It's a bit of a speculative one cause no one's officially said anything, but the suggestion is we might see less of that whole crossover element anyway. Interesting. Hopefully it doesn't happen. Hopefully we do get to, you know, still see it. And, uh, you I, know, some I, degree I, anyway, want, but. Yeah. I wanted to carry on, but we'll see. Same. We'll see. Same. Um, so the next piece of news, Carmella has recently celebrated her birthday. Um, with uh, quite a good celebration, if you will, because she tweeted out best birthday ever as uh, she revealed that herself and Corey Graves are now engaged. So uh, A wise, um, wise move from Corey Graves there. Now doesn't have to remember two dates. It's a birthday. That's when you got engaged. Smart oh, yeah. move. Smart I'm man. Thinking. Smart man. Um, but the pair have been dating <laughs> since 2009, uh, 2019. Sorry. Um, previously, their relationship was documented yeah, had a 10 on. Years, that relationship um, <laughs> feels like ten years, damn it. Um, but yeah, so obviously their relationship was previously documented on the likes of Total Divas and stuff like that. But um, I was Cody on that? Yeah. He was briefly, yes, with Carmella. Um, but yeah, mm. obviously, uh, yeah, great news for the pair of them um, to now be engaged and. Just a congratulations from your pals at the A to the K Wrestling Indeed. Show. So we're made up for you both. Well in. Congrats. Yeah, in. And don't worry, we know we're over the pond and it's difficult to invite us. That's fine. We're totally fine with it. We'll still celebrate. Cool. Yeah. 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 Anyway, Carl, moving on to the next one. Mansoor. I took a little bit of heat from... Um, I actually wrote in the notes earlier, typo, why back? <laughs> uh, anyway. Cry, well, like uh, cry back. back. <laughs> Am I right? right? Um, so Ryback decided to put an arsey tweet out uh, because you know you can't you know stay quiet when you're Ryback. You have to keep yourself known in the wrestling industry because apparently everyone wants you to retire. Well, <laughs> um, so he put a tweet out not long after Crown Jewel in which he added Vince McMahon and said, "You can give Mansoor Steve Austin's music and he still won't be over." Um, holy shit, your product fucking sucks. 
Um, or, you know, to paraphrase, give me some attention, Vince, please. <laughs> um, I think was what he was getting at. But he put this tweet out, obviously tagged Vince, tagged Steve Austin for some reason. Didn't tag Mansoor, weirdly. Anyway, Mansoor decided, you know what, I'm not going to let that lie. And um, no words needed to be said. He just simply um, put up the screenshot of Ryback's uh, tweet from a few months back, Carl, where he said, what promotion would you like to see me return to in 2021? And that poll, which had 72% of people saying, retire. Um, And that was uh, Mansoor's response, which was straight savage. Now, a lot of people have defended this and gone, well, Ryback, he put that on. He was just trolling people. That's why he put the retire option there. He wasn't trolling people. What what do you gain from it? It wasn't a joke. Like what? Like wouldn't it be funny if I hurt my own feelings? Like how is that a joke? Like <laughs> bullshit. He thought people were going to be all over him returning, and they fucking went. Right. Anyway, <laughs> I digress. Mansoor is now massively over because that was funny. There you go. Doesn't need Austin's music now, does he? He's just fucking got you know everybody I, on his I side. I hope he takes your music, Ryback. Right <laughs> yeah um, yeah savage who knew Mansoor was such a savage but yeah I think to your point what what is the point of, of, of that tweet from Ryback like what, what, makes what me laugh, ultimately like, what's he after well what makes me laugh is he clearly wants some, like he's tagging Vince definitely he clearly wants some sort of reaction some sort of attention but what makes me laugh is like this this product that you say fucking sucks you're clearly watching an awful lot of Ryback an yeah. awful lot of it because let's point. face it, if you were going to be like tuning into certain elements of WWE, not regularly, it wouldn't be Crown Jewel, would it? You know, just saying. True. So, True. Um, yeah, I find that funny. Anyway, I do too. Fair play, Mansoor. Legend. <laughs> um, so the final piece of news this week um, is. Or is it? But yeah, probably. Yeah. Oh, actually, yeah, yeah. Uh, we have we have got some breaking news coming <laughs> down the way. Um, but we need a breaking news. Nice. We need that Austin. Um, Glass shatters sound for breaking. I like news. that. I like that. You can uh, yeah. you can you can do it in a minute. Just make it. I'll up. just I'll smash my glass. Yeah, sad. Over your head, preferably. Um, but yeah. So uh, the next piece of news to talk about. So Eric Bischoff has been making some waves lately in terms of his comments around Tony Khan, AEW, and kind of um, you know comparisons to the like of WCW and you know how. AW compared to WWE, etc., etc. Um, his latest little tirade has been around. He's basically stated that CM Punk hasn't delivered in terms of ratings for AEW. Um, he said Punk hasn't delivered. He was the guy that came out, and his first comments were the addition of this talent was more significant than Scott Hall and Kevin Nash constantly making references to WCW because they want to be the company that WCW was back in the mid 90s. There's these constant references to WCW. When Scott Hall and Kevin Nash came in, we took off. Punk, you came in and you shit the bed in terms of ratings. Um, I don't often disagree with Bischoff. I do think mm. he has a hell of a mind for the business. And I give him a lot of credit. I, I even, other than like some of the questionable stuff you look back at, like the hot lesbian action and stuff, I really like a lot of stuff he did with WWE. right? But I, I he seems to have something at the minute rant wise that just seems a little off and I'm not saying he's wrong completely in what he's saying but like earlier on he ranted about AEW and like they if they want to really compete with WWE then go head to head with them like they have control over that I think he's totally missing the point they aren't WCW but the minute they've competed with WWE which by the way was WWE's fault I think people forget that like mm-hmm. Tony Khan may have ran his mouth but WWE were the ones who made sure that SmackDown went head to head with them for half an hour. That wasn't yeah. AEW's doing. Commercial free as have, well. He may have spoke up, but WWE put themselves in that position. So um, he made comments in relation to that, saying like, "Oh, that they aren't really going head to head, so you can't compare it." Like WCW to WWE, you know, basically they should put the money where the mouth is. It's like, are you forgetting how much of that of WCW Ted Turner owned? Like, it isn't quite the same scenario. They can't just go to the network and say, "I want to go." to Friday nights or I want to go to whatever night they, they've got their time slots I'm sure if they could choose the time slot they wouldn't pick 10 o'clock at night on a fucking Friday <laughs> to be honest but he's, he's talking about a two year old company like they should be competing in the same way WCW did they're two mm. years old like, I don't think AEW gets the credit it deserves for this right because people want to hate on it right and I might get a bit of hate for this because um, WWE fanboys and all that but AEW created a company in its complete infancy, and went up against NXT, which was the most 
fair like comparative level they could have had it wouldn't have been fair to put a a company that wasn't like that was literally it only just started up against raw or smackdown as shit as raw's gone right they went up against nxt and they thrashed them so they won that battle right then they've been doing their own thing and then smackdown put themselves against them and okay there's some debate overall ratings and all that bollocks but they still thrashed them in the demo right and i don't want to get into all them numbers shit like i enjoy both shows i don't really care but if they want to compete, they're doing really well competing at the status they are. They're two years old, maybe slightly over now, actually. And they're competing with a company that's 30 years in the making. This is not WCW versus WWE, and it never will be. WCW is a comparative company to WWE. Yeah. WWE have no comparison now, and he's yeah. forgetting that. Like, this is not... No, right, all right, Punk may be overhyping it when he's mentioning the likes of Scott Hall and that, but this is the closest we've got. Yeah. We're never going to have that again. <clears throat> this is the closest we've got. I mean... Yeah. I've got I've got a couple of comments to make about this. So firstly, it wasn't Nash and Hall that got the ratings for them. It was the NWO that got the ratings for them. It was yes. Hogan's heel turn. People going, what? Hogan's a bad Hogan's guy heel now? Turn was unreal to be right? fair. Like that, no one had seen. No, that that was what got the eyeballs on it. So the comparison of like, oh, you know, Nash and Hall versus CM Punk and getting eyeballs on it, it's not a fair comparison because saying CM Punk shit the bed. I don't think everybody was, you know, turning over to look at fucking Diesel and Razor Ramon at that point in time until the NWO was a thing. Um, exactly. So I disagree with that. But also, who's put a stick up Bischoff's ass? He, he's been in AEW two or three times. Like, so yeah. part That's of me thing, wonders... He seems to have one on him at the minute. Part, part of me wonders, has he, you know, tried to get a bigger active role in AEW and Tony Khan's gone, nah... It's- it's funny you say that, you know, because he made a comment that made me wonder that as well, where he said about, like, he, he almost pulling back a little bit from the, the sort of rant he went on, and he's saying, like, that he wants AEW to, to compete with WWE, wants them to beat WWE, and, you know, if they went sort of head-to-head with them, he, he'd offer his services for free. And I, that made me think, well, so you've offered your services for money then? Yeah. You know, like, that's the note I got from that, you know what I mean? And like you say, he's appeared on there a couple of times, and I didn't realise there was any ill will, but it seems like he's not happy with AEW at the minute. Yeah. Um, something something just, reeks of, like, you know, something going wrong there or something going sour. Like, he wants to be involved yeah. more, and he's not getting the opportunity. Or maybe he's just, you know, he's seen the likes of Jim Cornette and, you know, his fan base of people who love to hate AEW or, you know... Yeah, gotta Whatever. get them podcast ratings. And so, yeah, he's doing it for that reason. I don't really know, but it seems a bit but out of think, left field. Because I think some of them are like, this is a man who historically really knows the business quite well, and I think he's off base with a lot of things. And I'm not trying to sound like a smart here because I don't know the business. Like, I'm just a fan. But, like, I, from my perspective, and this is how I see it, I don't think they've shit the bed with CM Punk at all. I don't even think they're worried. Look, Punk's done since he come back. Hmm. He's been back, like, what, a month or so? And they haven't really put him in any high-profile feuds or done a lot with him yet. They're letting him ease in. I don't. Yeah. I think they know that. They know they're not using him a lot. Mm. Like, so, uh, like, surely they're going for this slow burn. Yeah. I, 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 that's the bit that puzzles me with this. Is like, if they were doing their utmost, they had him on all the time in these high-profile matches. They do, they've done more with Daniel Bryan than they have with CM Punk. CM Punk, like, look at a lot of the matches people wanted to see. They, they would actually wanted to see Bryan and Punk. They wanted to see Malachi and Punk. They wanted to see Cody and Punk. There's loads of big money matches there that they mm. haven't done. They haven't just yeah. thrown them at everything because there was shit going on. Malachi and Cody were having a feud, so you're not going to do that. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So he's been there. He's done more commentary than matches. And we're we're talking like he's shit the bed. He's barely done anything. Yeah, I think I think that's half the problem with people is you know they're so impatient, they're so used to WWE like just you know blowing all the, the high profile feuds and having a million rematches over and over again. AW doesn't operate like that. They literally like look at um, Omega and, and Hangman. Like what a slow burn that's been. Do you know what I mean? And this will yeah. only be the like, that's what, the thing the, is that the third time the we faced off or something. Do you know what yeah. I mean? So. You know, that in itself is, like... Look, I, I, it's a weird comparison to make, but I, I just look at the likes of Miro. Mm. Miro come into this, and everyone was like, oh, look, they fucked Miro up. Look, he, was, he was better off in WWE. Look at him, he's the best man, this isn't working. And that was him easing in, and then he went on to this uh, whole Redeemer thing and had a solid run with the TNT title, and is doing loads better, because they let a bit of time pass, and they let him find his feet. Yeah. And for some reason, we can't do that with Punk. Well, like the thing Punk's, is, though, as well, everything up already somehow. The thing We've is, even been there. Punk even tweeted out saying, you know, 
yeah, you know, we should have had MJF uh, interrupt uh, CM Punk's debut. Yeah, because that's the lowest hanging fruit. Do you know what I mean? So effectively, they know that they they could have absolutely blown the waters open by doing something like you know yeah. straight off and the bat. But that's the thing. and that is an interesting hint because people, I feel like we're inevitably going to get MJF Punk, and we're going to head to that direction. Yeah, but why? Like you say, why blow your load now? Yeah, like yeah, for me, you know, even seeing the likes of MJF and Derby at this point, like. We could have easily seen that over the last two years, but we haven't, and it still feels fresh and exciting, and I can't wait to see it. So, you know, you mentioned here the likes of Punk, like the people he still hasn't even faced yet. You know, he's come in, he's, he's been fighting people like Powerhouse Hobbs and stuff like that, and, you know, no disrespect to Hobbs, but it's like, that's not a feud anyone was clamouring to see. Imagine exactly. when you do start putting him there with Malachi Black and fucking, like, yeah. people are, are going to want to see that. Me laugh. Like, I think you need to use the term shit the bed if they've come in and they've played their whole punk hand and they've put every match that people wanted straight out there over the last few weeks and it just didn't work and they didn't get the ratings. Then yeah. I would totally agree that they've shit the bed with punk, but they've barely done anything with punk. And this is the no. bit that makes me laugh. And Eric must be able to see that. Yeah, surely he can. Um, you know, I, I'm not going to pretend I know what the long game is or why Tony hasn't you know played into some of the higher profile feuds yet um you know is he going to eventually put on a pay-per-view you know like i don't know what full gear is going to be but is he eventually going to put on a pay-per-view that is literally every single match on it is just a fucking dream match banger cut you know card who knows because he's, he's yeah. got the roster to do that i honestly but, think they know what they want for the first for the first feud for punk like actual long-standing feud for punk and um, right now and i couldn't tell you guarantee who it is but like right now i think it's not the right time to do it because if you look at all the people you'd want to put punk with the ones i mentioned like mjf malachi cody they're all busy they're all in in the middle of something yeah so for me i'm just like they're bad in the time and that's why he's going up against talents that he thinks he can push so he's having matches with the likes of powerhouse hobbs or he got his match with derby that was like his debut match and people really wanted that you know um it, similar to this whole, like he's having a match with Bobby Fish, I believe, on Dynamite this week, and um, you know people will kind of want that, but it's not like a massive high-profile thing. It's just two well-established people having a good match together, mm. and I think this is them biding time, waiting for that whatever feud they're waiting to end, so that Punk can get in the mix. Yeah, like imagine, imagine you know CM Punk's first loss. You know he's undefeated so far, so is yeah. um, Brian Danielson. So imagine who their first losses are going to be. You know they can build that in such a way that it's either a young up and coming star and it really cements them, or it's someone who's super current right now. But it's like you know, imagine imagine Punk and Omega. Like, well, honestly, I think that'd be a banger of a match. But if you if you want my honest theory on this, um, I think Malachi is going to smash Punk. Hmm. I think his first loss is going to be Malachi. I genuinely believe that. Like, and it's just speculation on my part, but people have wanted that comparison so much that I think they'll probably deliver it, especially now he's done with Cody. And imagine they're pushing towards Pack potentially, aren't they? But even so, I think at some point we're going to get Malachi Black, Malachi Black, Malachi Black, and Punk, and um, I think that might be the first loss he takes. Yeah, but Anthony Malachi Black is buried now. He lost a match. He did lose a match to Cody, to he Golden Cody. Buried him. Um, but no, joking aside, I literally don't know what the stick is up Bischoff's ass at the minute. I don't know why he's he's going after AW so much. Um, who knows? I feel like there's more to the story than, than what we know. Um, yeah, it seems odd that he's took so much on bridge to just just simply to Tony Khan tweeting like he's competing with WWE. Because yeah. it's all Eric Bischoff's just come at it like, oh, you call that competing back in my day? And it's like, yeah, but it was a totally different <laughs> scenario. I mean, to be fair, and again, this isn't a slight on Eric because I really like the guy, but that that is the biggest feather in his cap. 83 weeks. Yeah. Right? Well, his whole podcast called Yeah, <laughs> 83 weeks he beat WWE. That is, you know, so if someone else is coming close to that, instantly the, you know, the, the spotlight and the shine that he's that he's had over the years of being the one guy to dethrone WWE doesn't look as special. So, I don't know. Um, maybe yeah. maybe he's trying to do some, like, legacy protection. I don't know. Um, maybe, maybe. But, but again, like, if AEW ever managed to, to topple WWE or even rival them in any significant way, that's going to be a bigger thing than WCW anyway, because they've come from, like they literally built up from nothing and went against a, a company 30 years in the making. Yeah. Like that would be a much bigger achievement than anything WCW did if yeah. they get there. And but, that I would mean, take a lot to get there because WWE at this point is a dynasty. You're not going to topple them. You yeah. might rival them a bit, but you're not going to topple them. And I'm realistic in that. 
Yeah, and I think you know as much as they they like to play into this fact to to suit them. I don't think they are direct competitors because I don't think WWE does see themselves genuinely as a wrestling business. But uh, yeah, you've mentioned that like uh, previously that they are more of a variety show these days, yeah. especially with the way they book a lot of things. And you're quite right. And look at like if even if you went look at purely at their wrestling product and purely AW's wrestling product, and you might be able to go AW's got the better wrestling product. You still got. WWE over here going, we'll look at all these documentaries we're doing, all these um, different reality shows that we're making money out of, our film industry that we're making money out of still. <laughs> yeah. th- th- there's no way you're going to stop WWE as no. a company. No, no definitely way. not. You know, they've, they, they are their own fucking behemoth, aren't they, in terms of an entertainment oh, yeah. industry. So, but yeah, you know, that's why they are going to put out weird segments with the likes of Reginald and stuff doing a gazillion backflips because they then know that, oh, well, we can put that on our socials and stuff and people will see that who aren't wrestling fans and go, oh, that's cool, maybe I'll check this out. Yeah. Because it's not just about wrestling, guys, it's about entertainment. So Honestly, like, and it's weird to give them credit for this, right? But they're a company, right, who are so confident that they are unbeatable in their field that they can experiment with their flagship show and introduce Raw Underground, which they didn't know was whether it was going to work or not, but they were like, fuck it, we'll introduce it and see what happens. And they can do that because they know it's not going to fucking hurt them. Yeah. That takes I mean, some balls, really. The thing is, right, um, ultimately, whatever you think or say about WWE, of how shit it is and how it's not like the glory days or whatever, you're probably going to tune in every Monday night to Raw because you always fucking have, right? You've, you've, yep. built, you've built up this, you know, this thing of that's what you do on a Monday. You watch Raw, yep. right? And so, Especially over here in the UK. We're big on tradition. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, but, you know, like they've ha- that's what you've been doing since you were a little kid. So you compare that with the likes of AW, who has you know consistently had to move nights and move time slots and you know all this kind of stuff. Yeah. You know, the thing, we're, like we're trying to watch AW and we're having to chase the fucker around at the minute. Well, exactly. I mean, especially in the UK, <laughs> ITV fucking sucks balls, right? If oh, anyone man. from anyone really? from ITV listening to this, you fucking suck. Anyone from AW listening to this, you need a better deal because yeah. if anyone from ITV wants to come on the show and tell us what the fuck you're doing, well, exactly. <laughs> You know, Jesus, you know, yeah, we're going to show you potentially on the ITV hub at this time, or we'll show you, like, days in advance and we'll cut out half your show. Amazing. We're definitely yeah. not going to do live because we don't want to. Oh, and we've just got rid of ITV box office, so go fuck yourself. Yeah, yeah thanks. <laughs> so, you know, there's a lot of things that they still need to figure out, which, you know, comparative in terms of the... I know we, we only compare, you know, the Nielsen ratings for in, in the States anyway uh, when we're doing these demo things, but... There's a lot of global growth that AEW needs to get right and figure out and stuff as well. You know, well, look, I mean, Rampage two still years old. Televised. If you take Fight TV out of it, which you kind of have to when you're looking at TV side of things, Rampage doesn't have a home at all in the UK. No. I whereas, haven't picked it up. whereas for comparison, in the UK, you can watch Raw, SmackDown, NXT, recap shows, like on all these different channels. So something's available yeah. to everyone. And we've spoken yeah. about in they the do, past when we never used to have cable. The free channels. Yeah. So you can even if you can't get the pay per view like the the actual paid channels, you can watch the highlights. Exactly, they're, they're everywhere, man. So yeah, they are like a global behemoth. So they're not going anywhere. But I think for the success AEW's had um, in the short amount of time they've been going, you know, for for Bischoff to be like, oh, punk shit the bed and that in terms of ratings and stuff. There's so many different factors of like you know different time slots, different you know having to move and preempt for the NBA and the NHL and all that kind of stuff. And it was to your point when. Bischoff was running things. It was fucking Turner's company. It was Turner's channel. He basically yeah. just went and so we're going to go up. You know, like they had an I'm, advantage in fact Bischoff because WWE forward. was taped. WWE was taped at the time he was beating them, and like <laughs> they used to come on the show and read out the results. So why the fuck would you watch WWE? Because you know what happens. <laughs> just forgetting this shit. I I give Bischoff all the credit in the world. I, he knows what he's doing, and he did a lot for WCW. But he can't. He can't avoid the fact that Turner wanting to compete with McMahon and owning WCW helped them get whatever they wanted network-wise. Yeah. They were on Turner Broadcasting Network, for fuck's sake. Well, exactly. Um, so, yeah. So, the whole thing's a bit baffling, but I hope, for whatever reason, Eric just gets over this, you know, point and it becomes just a, a thing of nothingness and he just goes back to talking I mean, it's about one of them. It, the wrestling. It's like anything in, in wrestling. Like, Eric, whether he loves them or hates them, Everyone's talking about it, so no such thing as bad publicity, as they say. So he can carry on, and WWE can carry on, and they, they, 
wrestling fandom can carry on. But the bottom line is everyone's talking about WWE versus AEW, whether anyone wants to admit it or not. That's what people are doing. So mm-hmm. there's something happening there, isn't there? Well, exactly. Um, so, yeah. So interesting words from Mr. Bischoff. Um, right. Ended up being quite a long one because we had some ranting to do. But there's <laughs> some breaking news, Carl, that I think uh, if you're cool with it, we'll cover quickly because we've not got the graphics for it. It's only just come out, but it, it's it's big and it's worth a mention, right? It certainly is. Um, so it's a, it's a very interesting one, really. But um, Ring of Honor um, have just released a statement um, where they basically revealed to us that they have released their entire roster from their contracts. So um, they've you know put a statement up on their Twitter account that basically says, throughout the pandemic, our top priority was to keep everyone healthy and safe. And despite not producing any live events over the last 18 months, we were able to keep everybody fully contracted. We now find ourselves at a time where we need to make changes to our new business operations and we are planning a pivot for Ring of Honor with a new mission and strategy. The year will culminate with a final battle in December um, and we will be taking the first quarter of 2022 to work internally to reimagine Ring of Honor. ROH has the most dedicated fans in the industry and we appreciate their loyalty and patience as we can reconceptualize Ring of Honor. We appreciate, oh sorry, we anticipate returning to live events in April for the Supercard of Honor with a new fan-focused product and provide a unique experience for wrestling fans. So, yeah, it's been picked up by several um, different news outlets that, um, you know, this statement and subsequently what that means, which is that all of the uh, members who are contracted to Ring of Honor um, are no longer um, under contract. So It's insane. I mean, in, in many ways it sounds like chaotic, but it's the, probably the best thing for the talent because it gives them their freedom. Um but absolutely devastating for Ring of Honor. Hopefully, it doesn't like long term they can get back on their feet. With that because you f- you forget with like it, these are one of the bigger indie companies. We're still an indie company, and you forget the impact it has. Like the pandemic over the last what year and a bit now. Um, but I look forward to April and seeing what what comes of it. Um, and hopefully, it's not had too bad an impact on those who've been released because hopefully, it is just a mechanism to give them their freedom to work elsewhere. Mm, no, definitely. Um, you know. The roster they've got in place as well as, um, you know, they've always been seen as essentially that that feeder kind of um, territory. You know, you look at the the names as long as your bloody, you know, arm of, of like people who've come out of that promotion and gone on to be massive success. Um, Kevin Owens and um, Seth Rollins, you know, shit loads of people. Um, but yeah. looking looking at the roster today, you know, you've got the likes of, um, you know, Maria Canellis and. Uh, Mike Canellis and um, people like that who are on the contract, Jay Lethal. Um, so, yeah, there's definitely... I'm hoping we get Maria in AEW now. <laughs> well, yeah, me too. Um, but, I mean, they've got... Even I'm like... sure Mike as well, why not? Yeah, uh, they've got, you know, uh, I think uh, Jeff Cobb. Um, is uh, is Dan Housen with Ring of Honor as well? So... I think he might be, you know, the old Danhausen. And he's been, um, I don't know if you noticed, he was on the Jericho cruise and was interacting with uh, the likes of MJF and a few others at signings recently. So mm-hmm. he knows a few people in AEW. Could we see him? He's a unique character, Danhausen. I don't know how well he'd... But if, let's be honest, if OC can get over in AEW with his unusual gimmick, then Danhausen probably has a home there too. I mean, he seems to be, you know, beloved by everybody who watches wrestling at the minute, Danhausen. So. I mean, I don't like him. <laughs> Savage. Maybe he um, came on the show. No, I'm only kidding. But uh, I'm only kidding. He's he's an interesting dude. No, no, seriously, he really is. Um, but yeah, even the likes of I'm not sure whether EC3 is is uh, explicitly under contract with them as well, or whether he's he's got stuff going on in Impact or NWA as well at the minute. Um, but yeah, there are quite a few names who at least are part of their roster, whether whether they're you know explicitly under contract or just kind of make the odd appearances uh, mm. I'm not too sure about but yeah very interesting times um, PJ Black Indeed. obviously as well um, mm. so interesting so uh, yeah we'll see what comes of it but breaking news guys we don't often do that breaking well that's it you know this is the this is the beauty of being able to just uh, do this thing live <laughs> um, but that's also why we don't have any graphics because it happens as we do the show Um yeah. But yeah, so that was all the news. Obviously, a lot to talk about there. A lot of stuff going on with Charlotte. A lot of stuff going on with, um, you know, Bischoff and and AW and and so on and so forth. But 
yeah, let us know if you have any thoughts on any of the news uh, that we spoke about today. Um, but yeah, we are going to be back with our unique segment this week, which is the 10 future world champions, where we're going to be taking a look at 10 superstars that we think are going to go on to achieve the biggest prize in pro wrestling is a world championship. And we will be back to talk about that after some words from the lovely Georgia Smith. Hey guys, it's Georgia Smith here, and you've heard me on A to the K. These guys are awesome. Check it out. A to the K. 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 A to the K.